Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, SirSpam28 here bringing you some more World of Warships closed beta action. In this video, I'm going to speak over just a couple of eh, kind of mediocre games, but this is going to be my Japanese destroyer uh, tips, tricks, and tactics video. Uh, just to show you some of the techniques that you should be using uh, to unlock the Japanese destroyer's full potential uh, to really exploit their strengths and to kind of hide their weaknesses a little bit. So in this first of the two games, as you can see, this is kind of a, a tier 6 game. And there's a couple tier 6s, um, mostly tier 4s and 5s, and I'm in the tier 5 uh, Minikaze Japanese Destroyer from both of these games. Um, as you can see, this is a domination map. Uh, both Autopilot these games will actually be a domination map. I kind of got unlucky in having this getting uh, this map in particular in the domination game mode um, quite a bit, actually. So at the start, you'll see me plot a course for A. And then I see that the other destroyer on our team is already heading towards A, so I go ahead and change my plotted course up for B. And that's the first thing I want to talk about in regards to Japanese destroyers. You're very fast, you're very maneuverable, and more than that, you're very stealthy. Um, the spotting range, or the, the, the spotting distance at which you get spotted um, on Japanese destroyers is very low. And that continues, that's a trait that they share all the way up the tier. I mean, obviously, as the ships get bigger and higher tier, the spotting range goes up and up and up, um, but they never get that large. So, what you should be doing at the beginning of the game, especially on the domination map, and this is really the thing that decides what team wins domination maps, is the team whose destroyers rush the caps. And as a Japanese destroyer, you're actually better than an American destroyer at rushing the cap, just because you're on average a little bit faster and you're a whole hell of a lot more stealthy. So what you're gonna see me do is get into the cap, drop my speed, turn perpendicular to the enemy team so I'm not just rushing into the teeth of them and just wait out while I cap. And while I'm doing that, I'm constantly scanning around, looking for targets, looking at the team deployments, um, looking to see what my next move is gonna be after I cap. Now, in this instance, in this match, I can see that we've got a few ships invested towards A, but we've got a lot of our force going um, kind of towards C. So I figure that this is probably going to be a game where we cap B and cap C and win off of those. So as I get into the cap, like I said before, I'm going to turn kind of away from the threats and drop my speed because I don't want to keep going full speed, you know, 39.3 knots. Uh, that's going to get me way too close to the enemy team way too fast. And that's going to drop me underneath that stealth radius that I have. And that's no good. I want to be able to cap this point without anyone even knowing where I am. Um, that's just, you know, exploiting the stealth of the Japanese destroyer. So looking around, I saw my mini-map the that there was taken the lead. an enemy destroyer kind of coming this way. So I'm keeping my eyes kind of trained back there. I see his smoke screen. I'm constantly looking Auto at the team list at top, disabled. seeing if he's uh, dead yet or not but he hasn't gone down, so I keep glancing back there, because he's one of those that will be able to rush into the cap, um, and if he gets close enough to spot me, then all those other ships, um, those battleships back there, will start opening up on me as well, and that's no good. Um, the so enemy he's still team there, is taking so you can the see lead. me kind of starting to train my guns, and this is a Japanese destroyer, so the, you can see just the churning rate of these guns, even at that max range, they turn very slow. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and take some long-range torpedo shots at this battleship, which is the second main feature of the Japanese destroyer. First is its stealth, second is its long-range torpedoes. This destroyer, the Minikaze, has torpedoes that go up to 10 kilometers, um, which, compare and contrast to the torpedoes that I'm using in my Tier 6, or Tier 7, I think, even, um, American destroyer, the torpedoes only go 4.5 kilometers. So these, these torpedoes go twice the distance of that higher tier, American destroyer which allows you to take those long-range speculative torpedo shots at uh, big enemy capital ships like that battleship. Now, those may hit, they may not. I'm not really concerned about that. You can see my torpedoes are already back up. So you can just kind of keep spamming those long-range torpedoes at targets for opportunity. Now, what I do is I go ahead and stop in full reverse here as I'm coming across this peninsula. because so I'm kind of worried about A, those planes spotting me, and I. B, note that ahead of me and to the right, there was also an Omaha-class cruiser that was kind of in that area. So I don't want to go too far out in this direction, and I really, really, really want to keep this island kind of in between me and those battleships. Uh, so if the worst does come and I do get spotted, 
uh, I can have some hardcover. And there you go. You can see the, uh, the Omaha Cruiser that I saw on the minimap earlier has kind of re-emerged. And now I'm backing away from him. And I'm staying out of spotting distance at this point. He still has no idea that I'm here. And you can see that I fired off another speculative uh, salvo of those long-range torpedoes. Just, uh, just to see. Again, kind of putting more pressure on those battleships. Making them maneuver. Um, and, and, and you're kind of forcing their hand. So now as this Omaha is closing, I go ahead and shift back to going uh, full speed forward, pop my smoke just to get in some cover, and turn perpendicular to what I believe his course is going to be. I mean, I'm fairly confident that he's looking to come in and, and cap B for his team. So as he's coming through this little narrow channel, this kind of gives me an opportunity to launch some good torpedo spreads. Now what you'll see me do here is something that you should be doing with your torpedoes. Uh, launch one spread right on the money, right on the uh, grade leading indicator and I watch a spread a little bit behind and then the third one a little bit ahead uh, just so I kind of have my bases covered for when he maneuvers if he maneuvers um, to be able to hit him no matter which direction he turns with at least one or two torpedoes and you can kind of see that come into play here uh, the first spread misses but the second one hits Enemy from the second spread damaged. and then one hits from the third spread and I'm able Enemy to penetrated. heavily damage him and cause some flooding and he's at a low enough health that I start opening up with the guns. Now you'll see that this is a distinct disadvantage of the Japanese destroyers. If I was an American destroyer, this guy was already dead. I would have fired two or three salvos of all four of my five inch guns into him and he would have been dead. And those would have been AP shells on the Omaha and he would have definitely been dead at this point. But since I'm a Japanese destroyer, I'm only able to get a couple of guns around in time and because the rate of fire is so low, I'm only able to put like three shells into him, um, which means that he's able to survive for a little bit longer, uh, and I miss out on that kill. Now, I, I did get those good torpedo hits in there, and I actually did get a Citadel hit um, with an HE shell, um, which just goes to show you how low armored the Omaha is. Now, as these planes are flying above me, and they were gonna fly, uh, and they were gonna spot me anyway, I go ahead and turn my AA back on. Which was another point I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, at the beginning of the match, in both these matches, you'll see me turn my AA off completely. Uh, just to avoid giving away my position. Um, until I have to. But those dive bombers were going to fly. I could, you know, looking up in the sky and seeing their path. They were going to go right over me. So they were going to spot me regardless. So I went ahead and turned the AA on. Just to get some damage done to them. Didn't manage to shoot any of the dive bombers down. But hey, I did shoot that scout plane down. So we'll be... Um, so now we have kind of another contender. We have another, I believe, Omaha class, um, or just another light cruiser kind of coming in and rushing the B-cap. Um, as you can see, our team is fairly ahead, both in points and in ships. So their team is kind of getting desperate and just trying to rush the caps and, and do what they can to get points back. Um, and you can see I haven't really traveled that far in this match. I've just been kind of hanging around the B-point. I capped it, and I've just been defending it, um, you know, and, and making sure that we can win. And that's what you need to do in a domination match, is uh, hold the points, play the objectives, and uh, and once you got a cap, you want to stick around and defend it. You can see that my uh, torpedo salvo missed there, uh, just because he did turn, and he has a fairly movable ship. So I go ahead and launch another two at him, but I kind of see that he's turning, and he's almost dead, and he's under some pretty heavy gun fire. So the third salvo I kind of hold on to. And I actually switch uh, to that battleship and just take another, again, long-range speculative torpedo shot. 8.3 kilometers out. They may hit, they may not, but uh, that's what you can do in this Japanese destroyer. So you're just able to spam the torpedoes at long ranges. And sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't, but you're always keeping the enemy on their toes, and that's the most important part. Again, try to, uh, any destroyer, just your speed maneuverability, you shouldn't really ever be getting hit by torpedoes. Our victory is in sight. So remember to dodge those. And now as this battleship continues to close, I go ahead and pop my smoke and cut my speed. Um, because I can see that I'm going to be actually within spotting range of him. Unfortunately, uh, I am the smoke, so I should be covered. But I'm actually fairly sure that those shells, at least that one that hit me from the battleship secondaries, were actually aimed at the cruiser that decided that he wanted to use the destroyer's cover. Um, so that cost me my first damage of the game, and then I do get spotted out there as I'm kind of going in and out of the smoke screen. And the last remaining uh, remnants of their team are coming in this direction. Um, but we're going to win by capping, even if I don't get this kill. But these torpedoes are, in fact, going true. 
And uh, every single one of these six torpedoes is going to hit this battleship and take him pretty much 100 to zero. And that's going to give us the points that we need to instantly win the game. And that's just a pretty sound when all of those torpedoes just one by after one slam, 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 slam. He had a bad day. So like I said, this was a pretty mediocre game. Uh, didn't do them massive amounts of damage. Really didn't get the most points on the team. Um, as far as XP or credits go, but this was just a demonstration of some of the tactics in a Japanese destroyer. In our domination map especially, A, you want to get into the point uh, fast, cap it, uh, give your team that points buffer to win, and then you want to stick around and defend the cap. In Japanese destroyers, use your stealth and just use your long-range torpedoes to spam the enemy team. Um, so as we go ahead and go into the second game, again, same map, same domination game mode. Like I said, I've been getting this map in this game mode pretty much nonstop. Uh, this map is a little bit, or this match is a little bit different um, in that it's very much a tier 6 and 7 game. And I am now in the tier 5 Minikaze Japanese Destroyer again. So the other other match, I was, you know, it was more of a more of a 4 and 5 uh, tier Action game. This station. is more of a 6 and 7 tier game. So this competition is a little bit more stiff. Auto and we started auto on the enabled. other side of the map this time. I can see, again, that there's another destroyer off to my right, so he's probably going to get A. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before, but this time just coming north to south instead of south to north. I'm going to go ahead and rush into B, cap B, um, and defend it if anything comes my way. Um, now, this match is going to show off. Um, you can kind of see last time I talked about the deficiencies of the Japanese destroyer's guns and how that light cruiser was able to get... Um, you know, survive a little bit longer, kind of rob us of the kill, um, just because of the rate of fire, and I wasn't able to get all my guns to bear on time uh, to finish off that cruiser after we had hit it with two torpedoes. Um, but you'll you'll see that these guns, you know, they're not worthless. Um, you wanna you wanna not uh, not not use them. You know, you don't wanna forget about them. Um, they're still five-inch guns, and they can still put out shells, and they can still do damage, and they can still be pretty potent um, in a match. And you'll actually see me, um, at the beginning of this match here, uh, take out a U.S. destroyer with my guns, um, which is something that shouldn't happen. And the only reason I actually get away with that um, is because he was focused on that other destroyer that you see off to my left who's also rushing B with me, um, which is good. I, I, I mean, we've got another destroyer. Again, we've got a destroyer in A, and we've got another destroyer kind of hanging out towards C, and there's a couple cruisers right towards C. So I don't mind us doubling up here um, around B point. It just, you know, kind of allows us uh, to defend better. So that's that's fine. I'm not going to, you know, his tactics are great. So getting into B here, kind of, you know, looking towards where the enemy team is, early spotting out some battleships. Um, he's not quite in torpedo range yet, and just looking at his trajectory, he's not going to be. Um, but there we go. We spot the uh, enemy destroyer that came in with a smart sound strategy um, to cap B, like he should be doing. And I see it's a Farragut. Um, so this is the, I believe, tier 6 U.S. destroyer. So very good, very, 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 very rapid firing and good guns. So I don't want to mess around with him at all. But I know that his torpedoes are either 4.5 or 5.5 kilometers, depending on which ones he has. Um, so as long as I kind of stay out of that distance range of him, um, I should be fine. Um, and keep this island kind of in between me and him. Um, so I see that that destroyer launches torpedoes on that side of the island. I launch a speculative spread on this side of the island. Um, just to see, hey, maybe he'll like turn around and zigzag himself into them. Um, looking at his position where he is, I think he's just stopped on the other side of the island, which is smart for him. Um, he doesn't want to... It's kind of a game of chicken right now. We, neither one of us, um, either the two destroyers on my team, myself and my friend over here, or the enemy destroyer, wants to be the first one to come around that island because uh, we all know that there's a full spread of torpedoes, Our team has taken the lead. Uh, waiting for whoever is stupid enough come around that island first so what I'm doing is just kind of you know staying back um, you can see that I've cut my speed again because I just don't want to be rushing out of the cap and I don't want to be rushing towards danger uh, faster than I need to be um, and I know that there's a destroyer in between me and that cruiser so I'm kind of being wary here I'm not you know rushing towards his last known position but at the same time, I'm cutting out of my smoke, so I'm a little bit concerned. But that's where I'm going to go ahead and see him coming around the other side of the island to engage our other destroyer. And he launches his full thread of torpedoes, and unfortunately, uh, this destroyer makes a bad decision and can't avoid those torpedoes, which hit him, and then the enemy Farragut's uh, guns are able to take him out. But between uh, the salvo that I got off 
Um, and, and the salvo that our friendly destroyer got off before he died, and then the second salvo that I was able to get off, you can see we've really critically damaged this enemy destroyer um, and set him on fire, I think, in multiple places. Um, so, the enemy team is taking again, the, lead. the guns aren't useless, and at that sort of range, um, you can get them turned around in time. I'm able to get one more HE shell in him, and I think he's going for the ram here just because he knows he's dead. So I kind of zig and zag to avoid, but I still want to keep pretty close to him as he's coming for that head-on pass. Just so if he does have his for people's backup, um, they won't be um, we sunk an enemy destroyer. armed in time at that sort of range to be able to hit me and sink me. Um, so he attacks me back with a couple of 5-inch shells that takes off a little bit of health. Um, doesn't do anything critical to me, thank goodness. And the fire that I had uh, tagged him with with my second salvo that I got on him earlier actually goes ahead and, and takes him out. Um, so now looking at kind of the team spread, we have a clear victory at sea. We've actually already broken through sea. Um, and that enemy destroyer and cruisers over there are harrying um, what's left of kind of their team at, in their spawn point area over towards sea. So I know that I don't have to worry about that direction. Um, so right now I'm just looking Our team to, has again, the lead. defend B um, from this cruiser coming in. But uh, he's under a lot of shell fire, so I don't actually even fire my torpedoes at him because I know he's going to go down fairly soon. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, and I, I mean, I guess fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunately, because if I did fire my torpedo spread in that position, um, that battleship might have gotten hit by friendly fire. Um, but that battleship... He, he felt the need to close to within suicidal distances of that light cruiser, and he eats the light cruiser's full torpedo spread and goes down as well. Um, so, I, I, you know, he didn't need to be there because that cruiser was under uh, heavy fire from the people behind me towards sea anyway. He was dead in a couple more salvos. Uh, so that battleship kind of threw his life away, but no big deal. Um, we're still ahead by three ships, and we've got two cap points. So um, now that I've capped B and defended B, um, and know that um, no one's going to be approaching B um, from the C area because our team's broken through there. I can feel confident uh, to kind of push towards the A area now and uh, kind of choke off anything that wants to come from A to B. Um, so that's going to be my primary role in the later stage of the game. Um, so once again, um, just general overview of tactics with Japanese destroyers. Use your speed and stealth to get into a point and cap it early. Um, and then just use um, your torpedoes and your guns and just um, smart positioning um, using your stealth. And when your stealth is going to fail, use your smokescreen to defend the point that you've capped. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, um, you're able to hold on to that point and let your team do work. Um, especially on this map on Domination, um, it seems like B is only ever rushed by a destroyer or maybe a cruiser to back it up. Um, it seems like teams really like to swing around all the way, you know, to the one and two line around A or the uh, nine line around C and, and shoot through those routes. Um, so it's pretty safe for a uh, Japanese destroyer to go ahead and go into B. Um, now I fired my first speculative long range torpedo salvo against that battleship and they all missed. Um, so as I'm coming around this headland, I know I'm gonna be pretty close to being within spotting range. Um, so that's why I go ahead and pop the smoke. And I, I, I cut to half speed there uh, just because when you're moving slower in the smoke, um, it's more effective. Normally, if you're going full speed, especially if you're going like 40 knots like this thing can do, and you're laying the smoke, the smoke's only going to be behind you. But if you drop it down to quarter or half speed, um, you kind of give time for that smoke screen to envelop you completely and kind of move along with you. And it keeps you in the smoke better. Um, unfortunately, uh, this little headland of this island is, is staying between me and that battleship. So I'm not able to get the torpedoes exactly where I need them. So what I did instead is I launched the first spread, and then I waited about three or four seconds uh, in between. And then I launched the second spread, and then I waited another three or four seconds, and then I launched the third spread. In the hopes that he would see the first torpedoes coming and start maneuvering, even though they weren't on course to hit him, and maneuver into the second and third spread. Um, but now I've kind of, you know, pushed through and broken through uh, to the back flank where they were. And I found their aircraft carrier, which is good because our team didn't have an aircraft carrier. So this guy um, could do substantial damage to our remaining battleships. We have four battleships, they have four battleships. And this aircraft carrier could really be the difference um, 
in, in our battleships winning or losing. So I'm able to kind of take my time uh, and get all of my torpedoes into him and kill him. Uh, which ups our points greatly as well. And also, again, up. kind of secures our position as having the dominant surface force. Um, so now our battleships don't have to worry about being torpedo bombed. Um, and they can just focus our their fire is in sight. on their battleships, um, which is good. So that guy's making a break for B. Um, but I can kind of see, just looking at the mini-map, that we have tons of ships over there uh, to intercept him from getting into B and capping it. Um, so I don't really worry about him, and I kind of turn back around um, and go ahead and start heading towards their other battleships. This guy is steaming back towards me. Um, I think he's a bit uh, perturbed that I was able to take out his carrier buddy. So what I'm going to do is, again, these long-range speculative torpedo shots, especially as he's kind of turning more broadside to me, and I'm turning more broadside to him. Hopefully those might hit. They might not. Again, that's the whole thing about Japanese destroyers. You can just take these long-range torpedo um, shots and, and see if they hit or not. Um, so what I'm going to do is, while my torpedoes are reloading, I'm going to go around this island, make sure that I have solid cover. He's not going to see me anyway from that distance, um, but I'm going to go ahead and then get into this gap. And he's actually churned and he's heading towards this gap. So that's why I slow down um, just to give myself some time to get the torpedoes reloaded. And this guy really wanted to kill me. I don't know why he's launching torpedoes behind me. Uh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't ever uh, launch torpedoes uh, if there's a, a friendly ship in between you and your target. This guy's under some pretty heavy fire, um, but I know I'm about to get uh, cover in between me and him, so I'm able to reveal myself, and he's probably spotted me anyway, just with some, some fire, just to get some extra damage done. And my uh, fish are all in the water. The first salvo, of course, missed horribly, because, again, he turned all the way around from where I was aiming, and that's the risk you take with t you know taking torpedo shots at, like, 8 or 9 kilometers. Uh, but we go ahead and get a torpedo hit on the second salvo there. I don't know if I get another one. No, I think it's just the one. Um, but now you can see that our points are such that uh, even if the hand of God came down and wiped out all of our ships but one, um, we would still win. And there we go, because the battleship goes down, instantly pushes over that 1,000-point threshold, and we win the match. So again, just a demonstration of general tactics that you want to be using with Japanese destroyers. Uh, finished second in this game. Again, both these games, they weren't anything really special. Um, but just kind of demonstrate the general frame of mind that you need to have when you're playing destroyers uh, for Japan. Use your long-range torpedoes uh, to, to force maneuvers and use your stealth to get in there and cap points and remain hidden. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.